in a shocking turn of events. Health workers in the Federal Capital Territory, FCT, who threatened industrial action amidst the coronavirus scourge, make call of the strike. They stated that they decided to down tools because the Federal Capital Territory Administration had yet to pay them their two months' salaries. Still with me in the studio are two gentlemen. I'll start with Leonard Ebute. Thank you very much you. for staying. And of course, we have Samson Shoebi. Pleasure to have you still. All right, doctors indefinite strike, but today they started on Tuesday. Today, the House of Rep is saying there's a likelihood they may call it off by Thursday. And the question is is this strategic or plain insensitive considering the global health pandemic that we have now? Let me start with you. Uh, it's a little bit of both, really. So if they had gone, uh, um, if if I was a fly on the wall when they were contemplating the strike and they were saying something like, this is a time that we can plan a strike, we'll get attention quickly and we can call off quickly. They did say in their defense it was a difficult decision uh -huh. because so, of the reality on the ground. Yeah, so, so it's a bit strategic. Um, but if it was a case of this is the right time for us to go, because they'll listen to us now, then it's also irresponsible. Um, striking at all levels, I frown at it. I frown at it because um, I'm a fan of, if you don't like the pay you're getting for the job you do, you can leave. Right. Yeah, but this is not you a matter know, of them not yeah. liking the pay. This is a matter of uh, them not being paid for services rendered. True, true, true. So that's, I mean, I, I spoke generally, so. Then if you have not been paid for the services you have rendered um, and you have protracted conversations around this, there are also other ways of going about it, particularly if you're a health worker. There are certain jobs that take away from you or should take away from you your ability to exercise certain rights. It's like the policemen saying, because they are not getting paid their salaries, they are downing tools. You know, there, there, there are jobs that are so humanitarian that you literally are giving your life for a course. It is a course, a lifelong course that you signed up for. So even though you have a family to feed, there must be an overriding humanitarian agenda or ideology that must guide decisions that you make. So picketing from teachers, picketing from from people in healthcare, people with security providers, for me, it represent it takes away from our humanity when we allow ourselves the liberty of exercising such rights. Um, Samson, uh, what's your take on the uh, question of if this room, because what we know at the moment is they may call up the strike by tomorrow. What if that does not happen? We're hopeful that it does, but if it does not happen, what are the likely implications at this time of coronavirus? Well, uh, I think I want to agree with uh, my uh, co panelist Leonard. here, Leonard, um, to some extent. It's a two way thing. Uh, responsibility behaves on, on, the, on both parties, part of the administrat administrators representing the government and also the doctors. It's, it's your responsibility to pay workers when they've actually worked for you. And it's, that responsibility is so huge on you. The, uh, the, the burden of that responsibility is huge on the government to make sure that when they give commitment to workers, they meet it. In the uh, foreign countries we are trying to copy from, they don't do this. You know? But when you also look at the flip side of it, you also find that, that it's also irresponsible of the doctors to go on strike at this very time. Yes, so what, what are the likely implications, especially yeah. at this time, should they go ahead with the strike if the House of Representatives are unable to get to a resolution with them? Well, if they should continue with the strike, definitely it's going to have its impact on the society. We're talking about FCT, and that's one of like the major uh, economic hub of the whole North. You know, so that's the seat of power that definitely is going to have its impact. And I'm really seriously praying that they're able to find a middle ground, you know, hopefully tonight against tomorrow so that they can call up that strike. But I, I really, really feel that 
the doctors should have been more thoughtful about this. Uh, this is a very, very sensitive time, it's a trying time for the whole of Nigeria, and definitely posterity will always remember them. There's this repeated issue about the integrated personnel and payroll uh, system that was introduced, and they are saying that the regularities with the salaries became more prominent as a result of, um, of this. There's been pocket of issues since uh, issues rather since this um, system was uh, introduced. What's your take on this for essential health workers to be in that system? Yes, yeah, so it's a new system. In every system deployment, even big companies that are system oriented, big implementations like this have failed. I've seen some fail outrightly and it took another six months to to reboot the system. Some succeeded with teaching problems at the beginning that you need to solve. I do not think that in this particular incident the system is a total collapse, but probably there are bugs that you need to fix operationally. And sometimes it takes a bit of time. I've implemented systems before and I know that there will always be unforeseen. There will be scenarios around how the payroll is structured that may not have been all thought about. Yeah, like the last time I was here, we talked about the lecturers and how they were, you know, worried about, you know, you know, setting um, uh, things around their sabbaticals and how it will be managed. So these are scenarios that would then be add-ons to the system on uh, as they learn and understand. So I, I do not think um, that translates into a major incident yet that you lead to this level of um, strike, action. strike action at this point in time where a lot of people are volunteering their medical services. But I know doctors and I know that even if the strike is declared, the really so well this is exempting ones. exempting the yeah. consultants, by yeah. the way. And some, but, a lot of those doctors who are not actually down to, they are going to go to hospital and attend to their patients. And I've seen this That's the ones that are really called to do this. Mm -hmm. All right, let's 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 look at these other issues uh, coming up, uh, an offshoot of this. People are saying that if at this time doctors are even considering uh, going on strike, and then we have feelers coming in uh, that uh, the isolation center, some of the facilities that are needed, some doctors and medical staff that should be taking part in this have not been uh, properly trained and um, given the basic skills on how to deal with the patients should they become, um, I mean, should, they be, um, should it become their responsibility to take care of them? Does this worry you? Does this indicate that we are really not prepared? When it comes, we're talking about facilities, yes, but this time, the medical, the medics that are supposed to take care of the patients. Okay, uh, you know, the other time I was saying that it should be a two-way thing. Why, why are you going to the press to talk about how strong your preparedness is? You should also make sure that you do the needful per time. Uh, part of what we are talking about should be infrastructure, which should be training of the staffs that are going to be administering treatments to, to uh, patients and all, and also the environment, apart from sensitizing, sensitizing the public. So it goes beyond you coming to the press and telling people what to do per time. It goes into you making sure that the infrastructure is suitable enough to actually I, I, I banate people or, 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 or restrict people. If you are saying you are uh, isol uh, isolating people, uh, what about their psychological uh, reaction to the isolation? Do you have uh, entertainment, entertaining facilities to keep them not bored? Do, 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 uh, is the facility Basically, interesting? Basically, are we ready? Are we ready? Yes. No, so okay. how prepared are we in terms of all this? Looking at the infrastructure, looking at the preparedness of the of the uh, of the of the nurses, the doctors, those who are going to administer treatment, and even do we have the drugs? Because I don't expect that somebody who you are uh, quarantining should actually be paying. In some societies, the government is actually paying people. So what are the palliative okay. measures you are putting in to make sure that this goes smoothly? You know, okay. We should be talking about I, that. I want us to look at other issues because we have um, a very short time. And I want us to squeeze as many of the conversation in. The House of Representatives is coming up. Even the Lagos state government is coming up to say that they're going to, just like the Vatican and other places, they're going to call for a ban on places of worship where groups of people are going uh, to be across the country as a way to avoid um, the, I mean, to reduce the spread of the coronavirus is already here. What do you say? Is that a possibility in a country that is as religious as Nigeria? 
You see, this is where my frustration sort of mounts. I had expected that some big Christian or Muslim leader would have announced ahead of the government to say, um, in line with global trends to prevent the spread of this, let's limit um, gatherings in places of worship, trusting that God is everywhere. So that the government is even ahead of that portion of society is already bad enough. I do not expect that there should be any resistance to this. Um, because this is exactly the key to prevention, that people independently take responsibility. Because you take this thing from church, you're going to take it home to your children, your elderly parents, or whoever. Yeah. So that the onus is on us. What is going to make this thing go away is in individual hands. And I think it's a no-brainer. I watched the video of the Ghanaian pastor that was arrested this morning uh, because he did a church gathering and the police people came to pick him from church. And I really felt that that was really stupid. Um, there is no God that sanctions irresponsibility. If there was a God like that, that God does not deserve to be served. And so the kind of God that takes away from you um, empathy for others, that take, takes away from you responsibility towards the well-being of another, even if you had faith that can move mountains. There are going to be people that will come to that church that won't have sufficient faith to, be, to, 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 to carry the anointing to do whatever it is. And so the kind of religion and faith that teaches irresponsibility to society should be shamed. And so if such a ban is, is announced, I it expect that by. all responsible people, responsible preachers of all religion will adhere. And whichever does not adhere, press men, I leave it in your hands to show us the <laughs> pictures and images of the irresponsible ones so we society can shame them. Okay, um, Samson, um, 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 I mean, let's see if we can squeeze in some more questions. Okay. The what? education part of things, the not, um, not in states, uh, governors of the Northwest region have shut down schools for the next 30 days pending um, developments with the coronavirus uh, uh, pandemic. Uh, do you think that should be across board? Is it time for states like Lagos, Abuja and the likes to, you know, just go ahead and shut down schools or is that too early? Well, for me, I think we need to watch as things uh, unfold, as events unfold. For states who are, that we have records or scenarios of infection, you know, or records of this uh, COVID-19 infection already recorded, we can say that they, they, should, uh, they should isolate uh, uh, stu uh, students, people of such states. We can say that they should restrict academic activities. But for states where we, we have not had any record or any incidents of this kind of scenario, they can still continue. Because for, yeah, you also look around, if it's for the secondary, you know, yes, you can say for the national, for the entire nation, let it go, because now they are running the same curriculum. So how will some states not go to school when some are not going? So for you to cut across, I think it makes a lot of sense that the federal government should do that. E-learning, do we have that capacity? Because across the world now, people are reverting to e-learning, so students don't lose out. Because if you shut down schools for 30 days, what are these students supposed to be doing? We don't have enough day, I mean, internet access across board. If, if, in some places, I know, you might need to go to a business center and all of that. So how are we going to use e-learning? Will that, will that benefit some and deprive others? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's a crisis. There is no, there is no, no good is going to, there's no, there's no, you, you are balancing stuff here. So at the end of it, it's a zero sum game, right? We are going to lose something, but we're trying to preserve life. And so to the extent that life is on the other side of the equation, whatever you lose on this side is an acceptable loss, isn't it? But I just find it curious that it is the northwest of Nigeria that is then closing schools when we have no single case anywhere outside of Lagos. And really? Is that you being, think so? Is that being proactive? <laughs> there are or some cases, being... <laughs> but they've said most of them have turned out to be negative. negative Let's yeah. hope that that's the case, and then people should uh, do the basic things to uh, well, keep themselves safe. But, but now the question is, do we even have the infrastructural facility to go here? You know, can we do e learning? You know, how many? Big question. You know, that's the question. I must say thank you very much, gentlemen, for your time with us thank on you. the program. It's appreciated.
And of course, thank you for being with us. We'll take our plus report now. And when we return, I'll be giving my take. Do stay with us. The Coalition for Truth and Justice has accused international human rights watchdog Amnesty International of being on a witch hunt against the Nigerian government. The national secretary of the group, Abiodun Babalola, spoke to newsmen in Abuja, saying Amnesty International is being sponsored by foreign interests to distract the Nigerian military in its war against terror. I consequently wish to state that Amnesty International in operation in Nigeria made over 150 submissions against the Nigerian military through its lawyers, including Femi Falana SAN, Professor Ojuku SAN. The national chairman of the All Progressives Congress, APC, Adam Toshomale, has called on members of the National Working Committee of the party to sheath their swords and put the current crisis in the party behind them. Oshomale, who played down on the current crisis in the APC, said it is not unusual to have disputes, but urged members of the National Working Committee to continue to put the party first. He dismissed claims that the National Working Committee has become factionalized, saying he is confident all members have acted in the interest of the party. Parties that are more to the left, the left means parties that are more concerned with social issues, poor people, they tend to have more contestations than the conservative parties, where their principle is based on survival of the, fit, of the fittest. What binds us together in this party is a lot, lot more than the sum total of all the challenges that anybody can speak to. So we do not lay claim to a family that has members who will be so docile that they can't argue among themselves, or even sometimes seemingly want to fight. But that is the hallmark of democracy. It can only be unusual when we fight each other, we quarrel with one another, we develop that level of animosity that we become incapable of sitting down, putting on our thinking cap, reminding ourselves that what binds us together is much more than whatever divides us. So I think that God is never wrong. He has allowed what has happened to happen so that we all can learn. Everybody will examine his questions and strengthen those bonds of friendship, bonds of collegiality, and work as a family. We have come here to remind our members nationwide that this NWC is not divided. It is true, we have arguments. It is true, some point, we, 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 the temper may have been high. It is true, some people may have been provoked to try to approach the courts. But it is also true that deep in our hearts, no one of us wants to destroy. Like it or not, the coronavirus is here and we must follow basic guidelines to stay safe. They include observing basic hygiene and social distancing as recommended by the authorities. There are efforts. This is beyond politics. Therefore, all hands must be on deck to support government and health authorities in combating this pandemic. This too shall pass. Thanks for watching and see you soon.